Okay. All right, everybody. Well, I'll dive into the channel state and you're all free to interact with Ryoka. So have a great time and I will see you when we are finished. Oh, he just started, bitch. All right, we thank you for joining us for another co-creative communication and conversation between our world and yours this day of your time. We thank you for being yourselves. We thank you for investigating the infinite mystery that exists within you. And as you explore your inner depths and the majesty that exists within your own consciousness, you will find the mystery of life itself will begin to speak to you. You will find that your outer reality begins to beckon to you, call to you in new ways with synchronistic meanings designed to complement the inner archetypes, the inner beings, the inner powers, and the inner dreams that you discover within yourself. We are in many ways operating in harmony with your higher selves, acting as what you would consider to be collective dream weavers. So, on that template level, it is almost as if you are stitching together a type of fabric, a type of tapestry, if you will, a type of universal quilt, so to say. And you're not the only ones weaving this. There are many beings, some of them you consider to be extraterrestrials. Many of them you consider to be your ancient ascended masters working together in harmony with your higher selves to produce this living tapestry that becomes the physical reality dream experience. So remember all things that manifest on earth are manifested through each of you. You have domain of this planet. You have domain of this world. You have in a sense been assigned the role of steward. In that way, your responsibility on earth is rather simple, straightforward. It is to tend to your garden. Now, for some people, the garden may have many weeds, and that is all right. You must start somewhere. For some people, perhaps the garden has a great deal of fertile soil, but nothing's been planted. That's all right. Start there. And for some, they have created for themselves a type of Garden of Eden, if you will. A place of spirituality and sensual experience. And if that's where you are, start there. 
tend to the garden. This is the primary teaching that all of your spiritual teachers have attempted to impart unto your people. For remember that what you do ripples infinitely. There is no limit to the effect of your action. It might seem to end once you have finished a particular type of interaction or exchange, but that energy continues. In that sense, you are programming the infinite with every emanation that you produce. And it creates real-time feedback. And we remind you, the more amplified, the stronger the vibration is that you give off, the more powerful the ripple is that you create. Remember, the emanations from negative emotions will only reverberate to a certain extent. Yes, there is that infinite quality to them, but it's, you could say, domain of influence is rather limited because the negativity vibrates much lower, therefore it is more terrestrial, therefore it is more limited to your terrestrial physical experience. But when you are vibrating and emanating the frequencies of unconditional love, joy, ecstasy, bliss, when you do this, you are accessing various dimensions that transcend your terrestrial domain, and it allows for all of existence to take notice. And those higher dimensional levels of existence are more multidimensionally active. They are more multidimensionally amplified. So when your vibration comes into contact with that level of reality, that level of reality acts as a vibrational amplifier, a signal strengthener. So the manifested result tends to be more grand, if you will. It tends to be much more amplified, more charged, more comprehensive, and in many ways more balanced. So all energies that you have access to, positive and negative, can be used for creative purposes. We remind you, you are cosmic artists. All of you are artists, regardless of how you feel about that label, regardless of how you feel about that archetype, you are artfully willing this reality to be the reality that you experience. Therefore, we call you cosmic artists. Now, we will say one more thing before we take your questions. And that one thing is pay attention to the upcoming full moon connected to this month of April, it will be a door and it will contain an energetic impression that is connected to the solar eclipse that was experienced in your United States on the 8th. So this can allow for you to access the same type of portal that you experienced during the eclipse, but in a much more lunar way, a more feminine way. So this full moon, of course, will have a great deal of fiery energy connected to it, given that it's occurring within your month of Aries. But nevertheless, there will be this occult feminine dimension that produces a cooling effect, that produces a relaxing effect that acts as a form of feminine tenderness that you can draw upon for your lives. And of course, as you know, the feminine power possesses the power of being able to manifest a living being. This type of power you will have access to. Think of your dreams that you are calling forth, not as dreams, but as living beings, people that you are becoming through your invocation of such a world. So we thank you for receiving this. And now we make ourselves available to you for your questions, your curiosities, and your dreams. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Greetings. How are you, and Ayoka? Greetings to you. We are delighted to exist and delighted to converse in such a way with you and your world. We thank you for the gratitude. And how are you doing in your exploration of this living tapestry you weave? 
I'm doing very, very good. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Yes. We're going to welcome Tracy Gardner. You can unmute yourself and ask your question. Sorry, I didn't know where the unmute button was. That's um, all right. Remember, I'm really... we have infinite time, so we <laughs> are in no hurry. Okay, um, I'm a bit nervous, but I'm really excited to be here. Um, I had a um, message from Patreon with the ET Whisperer that I had three male hybrid boys, um, and I was really excited about it, and apparently they connect with me in the dream state. But I'd like to know if there's a name, any names, and a, a better way to connect with them more deeply. Sure, sure. We'll give you one of the names. If... The other two hybrids speak up. We will share theirs. One of them is reflective of one of the crystals on your planet. This child has adapted and adopted the name Carnelian. So if you begin to connect to this child's energy, the others will take notice and will likely share their energies. The other one is speaking up and has a rather similar name because remember the hybrids pick their name and sometimes, well, when they have a close bond with other hybrid children, they'll select names that allow for the themes to be complemented. This name has a type of historical reference to the magical and occult practitioners of your planet. And his name is Cornelius. The third one, we will create a space for that message to be received. And remember, if it does not come here, you have two names now, which means the third one will come to you rather effortlessly. One moment. It is as we had mentioned, this child wishes for you to, as we had said earlier, explore the mystery. So work with these two children whose names we have shared, and the third will make themselves known in due time. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to ask, apparently I have a, um, a future life on Earth where I visit one of the planets of the Sasani people. And I'm meant to stay there for five years and it's meant to be an eye opener. And I was wondering what that experience would be like, because I've heard that they actually don't even live on the planet. So I wasn't sure what it would be like. You're referring to thinking. our people, the Sasanian people, you had said? Yeah, it was meant to be. Yeah, it was meant to be well, when they were already settled on Earth. But I go to one of their planets. Sure, and sure. There will be an opportunity be. for which you would consider to be interplanetary travel. And with our world, it's not just interplanetary. For you would be interdimensional travel. So keep that in mind. It's a little different than your usual accessing of planets as you understand it. So you are correct. We do not dwell on our planet. Now, that doesn't mean we still do not walk on its surface when desired. We still explore with our world in, to you, what would appear to be a physical way, even though, of course, for us, physicality is a little different. It's a lot more wiggly. It is less densified. It's more like a physical dream that at any point we can begin to dematerialize and reduce back to its underlying energetic nature when desired. So... There will be excursions on our planet, yes. There will be humans whom walk upon a Sasani with us, yes. Now, keep in mind, that's a little further away than some of the other extraterrestrial phenomenon and contact events that will be occurring. Because to access our world, not just is a higher vibrational needed, but one needs to be somewhat comfortable with the idea of traveling through portals via craft. So it is something that the human body, in a sense, must adapt to. But you will get practice with this, all of you, because you're all learning how to consciously open portals in your lives and walk through them. So remember that your manifestational practice is a practice of entering into a portal. 
when you concentrate on that visualization with an emotional intensity that represents having already experienced it. And then you emit that visualization as a pulse of light in all directions. Once you're here, the idea is you let go and totally relax and just remain in a type of pleasant state and just dwell here. And that dwelling in the pleasantness and in the stillness and in the silence represents you actually moving through the portal you opened with the visualization. And then when you open your eyes, after that relaxation, you're in the new reality. So each time you do those types of processes, you're practicing for the external, more overt physical experiences that relates to such things. Thank you very much. And thank you for your wonderful question. <laughs> We will see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Gustavo, you're next. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Hi, Ryan. How are you, everybody? Greetings. Wonderful to Great experience thing. you once more in this way. How is your flavor of light tasting? Uh, very tasty. <laughs> very fun. Really, really exciting. Uh, I have just one question today for you. Um, yeah, I, I've been experiencing amazing synchronicities and amazing things. But uh, last week, uh, I was um, usually my alarm goes off uh, around quarter to six in the morning, and um, I'm usually already awake when when by the time my alarm goes off, and I just lay down there, and I usually see images that come and go places just appear to be random and but that last time i think i got a visitor someone say hello real quickly and i could barely see it i but i get i get a sense that it was a woman i don't know if she was wearing something blue or, or rather there was light a uh, blue light surrounding this person but it like they had long hair so I was wondering if there's something you can tell me about this 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 particular Describe figure. Describe one more time for us, please. A little more, for sure. more, if you will. Thank you. For sure, for sure. Uh, I what I perceived was uh, a woman. Uh, he, it, I, I got a feeling that she was very beautiful, and I'm not sure because the image went really, really fast, and uh, I'm I'm not, I'm not sure if she was rather wearing something blue or if there was light blue surrounding her. And it, 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 I got a sense that she had like long blonde hair and it's just the image was really, really fast. And as soon as the image came and went, my alarm goes off. <laughs> and so it was time to get up, right? So yeah. I was wondering if you could tell me something about this being. Sure, sure. We will describe her in a rather poetic way. For sure. The feminine spirit of healing and divination. Oh, my goodness. Yes. If you were to attribute her to a tarot card, it would be the high priestess. The high priestess. Yes, yes for sure. So I've been working. Linking, Go ahead, please. Linking specifically your heart chakra mm -hmm. and your crown. So she represents that upper portion of the center channel, which runs all the way through your body. Yes, from perineum to crown. She represents right. that upper half, so to say, to one third. So... Below her, you have, mm -hmm. in many ways, the energies of the tarot card temperis, or rather, temperis. Mm -hmm. And below this, you have the tarot card representing the world. Right. So she ensures that cosmic energy that is designed to enlighten you, but to also keep you balanced and grounded is able to reach you. So think of her as your higher dimensional assistant and ally. So as you're exploring the higher astral practices, as you're doing higher invocations, she remains there. So in your mind and heart, you can remain very soft, very balanced, very cool. And that will allow for you to handle the extra fire that your protocols invoke. Ah, how beautiful. Thank you. And you know, interestingly enough, um, I've been working on developing uh, 
to a greater degree all my psychic abilities. And I mean, uh, you and I have talked about like private other uh, other techniques that you have suggested. And I've been doing that. And I was kind of like asking, I remember asking like, well, can I have a sign that this is I mean, working? And this lady appears. So thank you. I think that that, that will be the sign. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, we appreciate you interpreting it that way. When you treat those types of experiences as sacred signs, as sacred messages, they become that. For sure. So, for sure. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for, for illuminating a little more of my experience. I appreciate you. Of course, we appreciate you as well. Have an exciting exploration. Thank you. Bye-bye. Next, we have Pat Zetzek. Welcome. Hi. Hi, good morning. Good afternoon. Hi, Greetings everyone. and good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you may find yourself on Earth. How are you this day? Yeah, I'm very excited. I'm first time in here. Uh, I have a one question. When I was um, hypnosis session, I see um, I was myself an um, alien being. It was a blue planet in my craft with others. And please help me how I interact. Oh, uh, which star guides I'm with? And I want to interact with spiritual family astro can you any suggestion with that and which star um which you know i want to know more information about it sure sure on the planetary level the vision that you received is deeply connected to the extraterrestrial beings that are linked to the planet within your solar system jupiter oh okay there's a strong connection here there is also, in many ways, a deep connection that you'll have to the planet Mercury. The beings here are wisdom teachers. They teach higher philosophy. They teach about high technology. And of course, they teach about high magic, as it is sometimes referred to. And they share these teachings with many of the other beings that are a part of the extraterrestrial community of the solar system, local to you. And of course, they have, throughout the aeons, transmitted these technologies and wisdoms and powers to your people. So you have links to both of them incarnating in these worlds, being a being, a denizen of these worlds. And in terms of the stellar connections, the extraterrestrial connections that are a little more distal from you, you have quite a few lifetimes connected to Sirius. Mm. Um. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. Tom, welcome. You're next. Hello there. And hello, there. hello to you. How are you this day? Uh, yeah, I'm doing okay. Thank you. Um, how how are you doing? And who who is it that we're talking to? Because I noticed um, may may the um the Syrian being that you brought through last week was he coming through more um before you started speaking about your world to of the first course. person mm -hmm. yes yes you're detecting the subtleties yes as we channel with the channel the syrian council of light their energy becomes increasingly more and more involved now there will still be a noticeable separation between myself and the beings of this particular council. Yet there will be many moments, especially during those high energy introductions that will involve their energy. So keep in mind that the way this operates is on earth, you have the channel before you channeling me. Yes, that's usually how most of you understand this process. In my craft, I begin to, in a sense, channel the council of light from Sirius. And that information is then transferred energetically through the channel's body into your world. So it is a type of meta channeling, if you will, that is occurring in those instances. And we're sharing this so you all can understand what's possible. It's not just that the channel before you channels. Sometimes the beings they're channeling will go into a deeper level of the channeling state to bring in other forms 
of consciousness. Okay, so so that being the ambassador of the Council of Light from Sirius was being channeled by you, um, yeah, during this transmission. Correct, and in that sense, it was a type of blended persona, unifying their consciousness and my own. Okay, um, and and last week was Tyler channeling this being directly. Yes. Exactly. What well, um does he have any more messages or is there any way more to connect with him, let's say through writings or beyond the meditation he gave? Yes, yes. There are. There are many ways to commune with the Syrian Council of Light and the representative, the ambassador, as you had spoken to. One moment. There is a extra dimensional phenomenon occurring. And we are going to read its energy for it to us is unexpected, which for our civilization is always exciting. It is time for us to share the name of that ambassador. So you may begin to more directly imbibe in the frequencies of the Syrian Council of Light. One moment. We are going to vibrate it very deeply so you can feel it before you hear it. So if you wish, you may prepare yourselves and close your eyes if you like. Safari. Safari. Zafari. And to speak it plainly, Zafari, similar to your word Safari, but with a Z. Also pronounced Zafari in that way. Okay, great. Um, I'm surprised yet it was unexpected that um, for you to receive those energies and information coming through but exciting as you say oh yes oh yes remember you are in your mercurial year yes this year reduces to eight mercury is all about novelty new expressions in a certain way you could say the mercurial powers are like that of a social butterfly yes going from flower to flower to flower sampling a little bit of each so that type of phenomenon of new experiences, new energies, new beings, this will be potently, abundantly connected to this particular cycle that you're all moving through. And these energies will remain once they are established as active connections during this year. If they are reinforced, those connections remain eternal. So there will be much more in relationship to these areas of exploration that you can look forward to as this year and relationship progresses. Yeah, it suddenly kind of hit me, like, this whole idea that, you know, we're going to have these ET, like, communications, um, contacts, you know, physical, like, in the upcoming years, and, and that the, um, the ramifications or or the consequences of all of that, you know, what what what, what that means for our world is, it's quite um revelation revelatory and um you know impactful it, it suddenly hit me so it's exciting oh yes oh yes there is the phrase you cannot put the genie back in the bottle or you cannot think, get the yeah. toothpaste back into the tube once it has been released it is like this once the contact occurs in an open way everything on your planet will change and it will be a guided change that you are directing as a people. We do not impose our will upon you. We see you as sovereign in that way. So we are here to help you sculpt and dream the highest expression of your individual and collective will. That's our role. And our physical proximity to your planet and the physical proximity that the other hybrids will share 
will cause many changes within your collective consciousness. Just as if you are in a spiritual temple and you are around a master meditator whom is really focusing on their craft and the teachings of meditation. And you may find that when you're with them, you feel better. You feel like you're in a higher state. Ideas are coming to you more easy. That's the type of effect that we have. So solutions to many of your challenges will begin to spontaneously appear. And of course, we are here to assist you with your challenges, but many of them you will be handling directly yourselves. Because remember, in order for us to land here, the earth must be vibrating at a particular frequency. Some of the challenges that you're having in relationship to pollutions, environmental contaminations, this lowers the frequency of your planet. So as you begin to clean those things up, your atmospheres, your oceans, your bodies, as this occurs, naturally, you vibrate much more quickly because you don't have those dense elements within your ecosystems or bodies weighing you down, slowing the vibration. So you don't have to handle all of it directly on your own, but the key is do what you can. That raises the vibration of the planet and it makes it more habitable for us in that way. And when, what do you mean when you say tend to your garden? Well, think of it like this. You are all, in a sense, like trees or plants in that you're receiving healing energy of support from the earth and cosmic energy from your sun and stars, and it causes you to grow. Sometimes that growth is physical when you're young and your body's developing, and sometimes that growth is spiritual and psychological. So in that way, you are all like the plants. You are all like the trees. You are all like the flowers. It's just that you have legs. You can move. So your garden is your relationships. Ultimately, it is your relationships. Now, not just relationships with other people. It's, of course, relationships with all of the little details of your life, your relationship with money, your relationship with hygiene, your relationship with clothing your relationship with your possessions, your relationship with the elements, the Earth Mother, Sky Father, as your indigenous referred to them. So you are in relations with all types of beings, sentient, non-sentient, conscious and non-conscious. So it's about harmonizing those relationships, seeing the sacredness within all of them and understanding how to work with that relationship in a way that creates more goodness, more beauty, more excitement. Mm -hmm. And in that way, you are tending to your garden. Okay, finally, I just want to speak about, um, Tyler uh, recommended that we were um, being generous and, um, yeah, um, ex expressing that quality, that virtue, uh, a couple of days ago in his astro astrological reading for the day. So can I just have, from your perspective, kind of what it means to be generous and what its effects are in our world? Um, yeah, what how potent it is. Sure, sure. It's multifaceted, the effects. We'll give some examples of how one could demonstrate generosity. So in some places on your planet, there is a large population of homeless people. And many people will subconsciously label them as untouchables. I'm not going to look at them. I'm not going to talk to them. I'm not going to give them anything because they're somehow wrong. Their position in life is wrong. And if I'm associated with them, well, that might mean I'm somehow wrong. That's generally the idea that many people hold on to, at least in some of the more developed countries. So, to destroy that false belief and to bring abundance and goodness into both your world and the world of that community. In this example, perhaps a homeless person asks you for money and perhaps you usually say no. So a moment of generosity would be actually giving them the money. Even if it pains you to do it, do it. Because if it pains you to do it, well, that is a sign there is attachment to it, which will actually limit how much money you can receive 
when you are in moments of generosity, when you are sharing money in that way, when you're distributing wealth in that way, you begin to allow for the energies of money to circulate and it ends up attracting more to you. That's one of the secrets of abundance. That's why churches encourage tithing. There is, of course, a type of personal gain that is connected to the reception of the offerings connected to the tithing. But in general, as a spiritual practice, it's designed to assist those who attend the church in being less attached to money so more can reach them. And the premise is, of course, that God, the source, in many ways, is similar to a high vibrational mirror which amplifies whatever you project upon it. So to project money upon it esoterically would translate as the source amplifying that energy and returning it back to you. So those are some examples. Ultimately, generosity is what allows for you to have a type of energetic wood that is healthy and that is ready to be burned by the fire of love. So think of generosity, think of kindness, think of forgiveness, these qualities as the wood that is needed for the fire of unconditional love to ignite within your body and mind. Amazing. Thanks so much, Ryoka and everyone. Lessons. You're very welcome. Next, we have Jasmina. Welcome. Hello, Ryoka. And hello to you as well. How is your day of days going? Thank you. Very good. And interestingly, the question before is really connected to mine. So my question is the pr practicing of love or unconditional love what that actually means and can you also say something about giving tough love versus reminding one who has done maybe something bad uh, about all their good qualities which is also a practice and also maybe including you know this naive naivety to be naive and and think like okay i want everything to be good everything should be so harmonious and what you said about um you need to also look at all your negativity inside and not shove it away kind of yeah sure sure excellent questions so there are some plants that you can love with your hands yes you can touch them mm -hmm. You can take in their beauty. You can take in their essence in a physical way. You can get close. There are other plants that are spiky. They're beautiful in their own way. Wonderful even. Some of them highly medicinal. Yet if you touch them, you might get poked. It might hurt. Yes? Mm -hmm. Unconditional love is like this. It is fluid. And it is directly connected to your attention and your relations. How you perceive someone. How you treat someone. Those dynamics are what create the energetic scaffolding needed for the universal power of unconditional love to begin to flow forth into your life. Because unconditional love is omnipresent. It's in the air. It's in your cells. It is everywhere. It is a mm. unifying frequency. It's just that many people on your planet are not tuned to it. They have not adjusted their radio to the station that plays the song of unconditional mm -hmm. love. But as you create these positive and healthful dynamics between yourself and those you're in relations with, you set the stage for unconditional love to enter. Because remember, unconditional love in a way, yes, is something you practice. However, keep in mind, it is technically something that you channel. So the channeling of it and the practicing of it work together. It allows for it to be complete. You have the phase, fake it till you make it. We don't recommend faking unconditional love. We recommend doing what you said, practice it. That's the superior way. Because if your love is fake, others will sniff that out and feel it. It must mm -hmm. be true in that way. So we had mentioned the idea of the plant which you can touch, the mm -hmm. plant which you can only look at. 
Yes. Yes. This is how you prevent the naivety that you described. Because yes, there are going to be people on your planet whom challenge you in tremendous ways. And perhaps if you were to get close to them, it would introduce chaotic vibrations into your experience. Maybe there is an ex-lover whom is rather harsh. Maybe mm -hmm. there is a family member whom is wrapped up in an addiction. They cannot see you clearly. Mm -hmm. yes. There are certain relationships which are more challenging that, of course, are wise to keep. It is wise to keep these types of people in your life. But that does not mean invite them in. That does not mean let them get close to your personal world, to your personal reality. We're not saying invite them in like that. What we're saying is do not forsake those whom feel forsaken, for it will only reinforce the discordant vibrations that cause them to be hypnotized by whatever negative energies they have unconsciously chosen to hold. Mm -hmm. So love them from afar, be supportive from afar. That doesn't necessarily mean, again, that you're spending copious amounts of energy on them. It could be as simple as sending a loving prayer to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could be as simple as just sending them a text. Hey, I was thinking about you. And I have to say, I really appreciate X, Y, and Z, pointing out those positive qualities that you mentioned. So with unconditional love, there are still boundaries that we would encourage utilizing that aren't designed to keep the love out or trap it, but rather are designed to channel it in specific ways. So think of the boundaries that you are creating as a type of pipeline that delivers the unconditional love in a specific way. Mm -hmm. So there is a phrase on your planet, it's perhaps a little dated, and it's a rather religious phrase, and it is the following, love the sinner, hate the sin. And what this is getting at is the following, do not see the person in their fallen state, which of course will be the obvious thing to see. Mm -hmm. Don't deny it and pretend it's not there but see them from a place of power. On a soul level, they're choosing that darkness. They're choosing that challenge. They're choosing this negativity because they're so strong. Mm -hmm. And when they carry that for so long, it's like they're building spiritual muscles. So when they finally put all of it down, those hands that they have will then be free to create whatever they desire, and they will be very muscular, the arm energetically that they possess so their creative power will be much stronger mm -hmm. so when you see those that are wrapped up in the hypnotic spell of discord and severity see them just as you have done in that higher light and relate to them in whatever way is nourishing for your reality mm -hmm. so if that's loving them from afar love them from afar if that's giving them a big old hug, give them a big old hug. You have different ways of relating. And that is, of course, healthy. It's important. Just mm -hmm. as you relate to your spouse much more differently than you relate to the neighbor down the street. These types of distinctions are useful. It keeps your social cohesion cohesed. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Oh, of um, course. And the second question would be about my dreams and how they developed. So I'm very happy for a long, long time. I had dreams where I was always trying to escape and somebody was trying to get me and I was running from them. And always in the last moment, I went into an elevator and hands were coming through, but I could escape and things like that. And I woke up a lot of times really anxious and also as a child. I fell out of bed a lot. I was moving, rotating my bed, and I always had so much fear of, I don't exactly, but witchcraft, that there's something evil in the room. And this was also till, I don't know, 
10 years ago, five years ago, sometimes this happened that I had some, a bit of a lucid dream and I thought there is something dark and it come, sometimes it came towards me really quickly and went inside my head, I felt. This stopped then and some months ago I had dreams a few times about a bit lucid, like waking up and then I realized there's somebody breathing next to me. It was a kind of monotone, like snoring, breathing. And then when I realized in my mind, okay, I went to bed alone, how can that be? I got fearful and I didn't dare to look at the side, so I don't know what it is. And I wanted to ask you if you have Well, any... each of these things are a little different. They're all rather okay. special and mm -hmm. unique occurrences. So we'll okay. talk about them sort of one by one, if you will. Mm -hmm. You being chased and then finding safety in the elevator. This is you exploring the lower portions of your energy body. Think of your root chakra, which extends from the perineum and tailbone area down into your feet. Mm -hmm. So you are descending into those lower dimensional levels of your energy body. And you're going to find their ancestral energies and energies related to past lives. Mm -hmm. Those energies are psychically stored within the root chakra. So you were cleaning house, so to say, and you were feeling rather ambitious. Ooh, maybe I'll go in the basement. It's so creepy down there. Maybe I'll see something spooky. Yes, many children get a thrill out of exposing themselves to rather calculated forms of danger mm -hmm. and fear. Because, of mm -hmm. course, it's your basement. You know what's down there. You've seen mm -hmm. it with the lights on. Yet with the lights off, it can be rather scary. And, well, let's just say your energetic basement, for many of you, can have some interesting monsters. But okay. again, a monster in ancient times was seen as a message from the gods. It was seen always as a type of deity. Mm -hmm. It was not seen as necessarily holy or unholy. It was seen as objectively special and worthy of meditation, worthy of consideration, worthy of contemplation. So you were exploring those layers of yourself. And this allowed for you to receive, especially at a young age, a great deal of wisdom from that ancestral level. And it also assisted you in being able to really explore some of those fear energies that may be resonant with the collective root chakra of the family lineage. So it's a way of exploring yourself. It's a way of conquering fear. And it's a way to bring that innocence and purity of your childlike nature into those dimensions of the self. So they can, in a sense, reclaim their innocence as well. In relationship to the sound of the breathing, your nervous system and the nervous system of one of your parallel, simultaneously occurring selves synchronized. Mm. So this person wasn't necessarily next to you physically, but it seems like that because that's how that synchronization can manifest as an experience in physical reality. So sometimes if you are synchronizing with a spirit guide or another self, it will begin to feel like there's a presence in the room. And sometimes you can even locate it. That mm -hmm. represents the portal, that area where the energy is coming in the most. That portal exists within your energy body and aura. Mm -hmm. oh, that's interesting. Okay. <laughs> so the fear did not come from the grays or something because you once said that they have worked on my body when I was a baby or so, I think. No, no, the fear no. can't come from the grays. It can only come okay. from you. Yeah, I mean, from, I don't know. You mean, did you respond some... in a fearful way to yeah. them? Is that what yeah. you're saying? Sure, yeah. you've done that, of course. Most of you have. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It is common. Remember that on your planet, you think of yourselves as the apex species. Yes? What beast could possibly conquer humanity? at this point in your evolution. You don't really have to contend with that anymore. So when you encounter what to you appears to be a higher form of life, higher on the totem pole, well, it freaks many of you out, to use your common terminology, mm. because you're used to predation on your planet. 
So there is the unconscious assumption that if there is a higher being with mm -hmm. more capability and power than humanity, well, if it follows in humanity's footsteps, it would treat humanity like an animal. Yes, it would see that humanity is under its domain. Mm -hmm. okay. Or within it, in a sense. Mm -hmm. So that's not necessarily how those things operate, those perspectives that many higher beings use. There are some, yes, that hold on to that mentality. There are certain factions of reptilian beings that hold on to such perspectives, but the greys don't necessarily see humanity in that way. They don't see you as something that can be toyed with. They see mm -hmm. you as something rather special. Hmm. However, because of the way they have treated themselves, they oftentimes do not necessarily treat humanity in the most mammalian of ways. Sometimes their attention can be similar to a scientist looking at something in a Petri dish, cold, mm -hmm. detached, objective. Mm -hmm. So the greys do, however, hold a certain level of reverence for your species, because of course, without your species, their souls would be in a type of limbo after the expiration date of their bodies. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, the soul will follow the genetic trail. So you are all used to human DNA, which means, of course, your souls become used to it, which means that if you choose to incarnate again, well, it will be very likely you get a type of human or humanoid incarnation because the soul knows the genetic code. The greys have mutated themselves to such an extent their genetic code became incredibly warped. And there is therefore almost nothing in existence with a similar code. Mm -hmm. Their bodies, of course, are reaching an expiration date. Therefore, their souls would not have a form to adhere to. That's the danger connected to the imbalances the greys created it was not just a physical type of danger it was also a type of you could even go as far as to say spiritual danger they had created because of that so the mantis beings recognizing this assisted them in creating the hybridization program which would allow for their genome to live on in a more perfected way thus allowing for those souls to then incarnate into those hybrid species and live on mm -hmm. yes okay um, and how is it that you as the hybrids are so, um, or it seems to me, I don't know, more conscious again, when you're, um, when the greys are also your, uh, the species you came from and, and you have such a bigger, or it seems to me, I don't know, uh, more uh, conscious. How is that? Is this also this slingshot theory thing or it's how the point of the hybridization program? So yeah. the mantis beings, the mantis, they are master geneticists. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with their story? No, it's their story, not, but I know that they helped the, the greys and that they are the founders or something they were called or creators. Sure, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So that word there, founders, that's key. What are they founding exactly? I think they plans. build the scaffolding, the energetic scaffolding that eventually densifies and becomes a world. They build yeah. the mm -hmm. scaffolding that eventually densifies and becomes DNA. Uh -huh. okay. So they build worlds and they build the beings of worlds. They're incredibly ancient, mm -hmm. rivaling that of the reptilians. They've been here for aeons. They are extra-dimensionally focused, and they have also densified certain levels of their consciousness, allowing for them to materialize in a quasi-physical sense, in a physical sense, but they are fundamentally energetic beings on a macro level. Mm -hmm. They have been present since the beginning of this universe. Mm -hmm. They are not necessarily of this universe. Mm -hmm. They have their own type of ascension. That's a story for another time. Mm -hmm. It is a rather interesting and twisting tale of how they came to be. So these master geneticists that are the mantids works with not just gray DNA, but also the DNA of your species, as well as the DNA of a myriad of other extraterrestrials. 
these different genetic components and bits of information were spliced together, merged in a spiritual and technological way. The genetic traits and factors that are related to empathy, intelligence, communication, artistic expression, spirituality, all of these things were specifically targeted and amplified. Mm -hmm. So that is how we have come to be. And it is in many ways what assisted us in having the necessary scaffolding that would produce an accelerated awakening. Because remember, when our species was born, the same instructions were given that your ancient philosophers received. Know thyself. Mm -hmm. This was our instruction. Mm -hmm. We had to discover ourselves just like all of you did, but it was a little easier for us. So we had a period of time that was not based in super consciousness as you understand it. It mm -hmm. was a type of seeking consciousness, the quest for the mystery. Mm -hmm. So we developed our language, we developed our symbols, just as your ancient occultists did, and we began to explore what we perceived as the higher meanings of life, the higher meanings of the universe, our reason for being here. We asked ourselves the exact same questions all of you asked. Mm -hmm. And through our rituals, through our potency on the spiritual level, we attracted the beings of Sirius who mm -hmm. lived amongst us, who dwelled amongst us, just as they did for all of you. And they guided us in that way. Thank you. Very interesting. <laughs> of course. As are you. Thank you. Have a nice day. You as well. It's 12.08 your time. Excellent. We thank you all for these wonderful questions. It has been so delightful to converse in this accelerated way. Our species gratitude, appreciation, and of course, unconditional love to each of you and to all mm -hmm. members of your species and especially to those whom you hold dear in your hearts. Excellent. Excellent, everybody. That was a lot of fun, and I appreciate you coming. Uh, we'll see you next week. We're going to be doing this again on Monday. And in case you don't know, I, I like to promote the programs. Uh, we have the Magnum Opus training. And in just a few weeks, we are going to be getting started with level one on the 26th for sexual alchemy. So if you are excited about learning how to harness that natural power that we have, that is both charismatic and beautiful and creative, then I invite you to join us here. It was the sexual alchemy practices that helped me to do what you're seeing. So, and I, I mean that there was a period of time where I was channeling and it was decent, you know, it, I think it was good channeling. When I began the sexual alchemy, this was in 2017, 2016, 2017. It was a night and day difference. Um, it, it strengthened everything. My dream for myself uh, came true, right? And it's it's what I'm currently in now. So it is the creative power and you can use it for intimacy. You can use it for healing. And of course you can use it for bringing your dreams forth and it works. So I invite you to join us there. And I also thank you so much. It's so great to be able to co-create with you all and to have this Patreon to do it. And I foresee it just getting bigger. You know, and all of you have helped to make it happen. So thank you for assisting me in my success. And I mean that in the deepest way. And it is my honor to assist you all in yours, you know, through these modalities, through these conversations. So be well, my friends. I will see you on Monday and I'll see some of you probably this afternoon. So have a wonderful rest of your experience and I will talk to you all again very soon.